Hi friends. So for this part of the video on Chinese pottery, we're going to sample examples of Chinese pottery um, from across 10 millennia of Chinese history, all the way from Neolithic age um, 10,000 years ago to Qing Dynasty, which is pretty much in the recent past. As I said, I know next to nothing about pottery, so I um, apologize in advance because I probably will not be picking the most representative examples from each time period, and I may even skip some time periods. This is a black pottery mug uh, from Longshan culture. Now, uh, Longshan culture uh, is sometimes referred to as black pottery culture. Uh, this black pottery artifact is also from Longshan culture. We can already see some intricacies in design, right? Like clearly um, this part is hollow. And uh, so it's uh, here, uh, it says that it's probably used uh, as, as a vessel for drinking alcohol. An example from Ma Jia Yao culture. Yeah, so we can already see uh, colored pottery. Um, Majiao culture was approximately in the Gansu Qinghai area. This was uh, the base is red pottery. There's some like black paint that's applied. Here's another example of uh, Majiao Majiao culture um, colored pottery. This one's pretty cool. This is from Cishan culture. It's a red pottery example. Cishan culture was dated to around 6000 to 5600 BC. Wow, that's and this was um, hypothesized to be a uh, vessel that used to hold water. We did span a couple of different cultures. So here's an example of a ding from um, the Orient States period. Uh, this ding is an imitation of a bronze vessel from the same time. Uh, here it says it was first used as a cooking vessel and it first emerged in the Neolithic age in some sites in Henan and some sites in Hebei. And uh, even though it first emerged as a cooking vessel, here it says that it gradually um, started being used for a war and burial rituals. And, um, you know, in the Warring States and Han period, we, are, we gradually start seeing ceramic ding, which was also used uh, in burials. Here is a Gu Cang Guan from the Three Kingdoms period. This is a new type of vessel that emerged during the Three Kingdom period, as far as I know. And um, you can see that it's very intricately carved. Uh, on top, you see a representation of a house and a lot of animals surrounding it. So, uh, you know, typical animals you see include deer, pig, uh, turtles, fish, dog, uh, etc. And uh, the point is that it was used in burial rituals and um, it was, you know, to make sure that after the person goes to the afterlife, they will have what's represented on this vessel, right? A nice house and a lot of food, uh, animals indicating prosperity in the afterlife. Going forward in time, here is a Qingyou Lan figure from the Western Jing Dynasty. Uh, Qingyou translates to Celadon Glaze. And according to the description, Celadon Glaze was the earliest colored glaze that was used in Chinese pottery, and it emerged from the southern regions. Um, and celadon glaze used in Chinese pottery uh, used iron as a main pigment, and um, how much iron oxide was in the glaze would have determined the final color that, that we would have seen. And here is another example of celadon glaze pottery. Um, it is a chicken head vessel. According to this description, this chicken head vessel as a vessel type emerged during the uh, Three Kingdoms period, but this particular one is from the Western Jing dynasty. And here we can see a very cute chicken head. And according to this description, sometimes the chicken head in these kind of vessels are purely for decorative purpose. And sometimes, as we see here, it is actually used as the spout of the vessel. And actually, here is another example of Qingyou Ji Tohu, a Salalong glaze rooster spout vessel. Um, and this one is from the Northern and Southern Dynasties period. Uh, this one is from Nan Chao, the Southern Dynasties. Um, yeah, it's slightly different, but again, it's the rooster head motif. So this is another vessel from the Northern and Southern Dynasties period that I really liked. Um, it's uh, with a different glaze, Qin Huang You. Um, so lead yellow glaze is the brute translation. I'm not sure how ac technically accurate that is because this is definitely not my field of expertise. Um, the description says that it is a type of low fire glaze. And um, it seems that so, like if you incorporate lead into the glaze, then the firing temperature could be lowered. Um, and it was invented later than the celadon glaze that we talked about previously, um, but it was already quite common in the Han Dynasty. And so according to the description, this vessel was unearthed in 1958 in the Henan province uh, from the tomb of Li Yun and his wife. Li Yun was an army general in northern Qi, and uh, that's how uh, this vessel was actually dated um, to year 576 because uh, it, it was recorded that he was buried at the time. 
So the description also says that the design of this vessel is important in a couple of ways. Um, one way being that uh, you know this new color glaze that we see kind of open the door for more colorful vessels that we will see from Tang Dynasty onwards. And the description also says that the patterns we see carved onto this vessel has some uh, underpinnings in Buddhist art. So again, I'm not an expert in any of those things to comment more, and I'm just, I guess, relaying the descriptions. Uh, okay, so now let's fast forward to the Tang Dynasty. From here onwards, there is literally an explosion in the number of artifacts that you can find uh, in various museum catalogs. And um, because of my lack of knowledge, you know, for the previous dynasties, I'm already probably not picking representative artifacts. And even so here, there's just way too many. I highly encourage you to check them out yourselves. For Tang Dynasty pottery, the first example that I wanted to show is something that caught my eye. Uh, this is a white glazed pottery piece. And it caught my eye because it looks like it is an imitation of a leather pouch. And this kind of like using pottery to imitate leatherware is also found later on in Liao Dynasty pottery. So I thought that was super interesting um, to see this motif in Tang Dynasty pottery. And um, the second artifact that I want to show is mainly for the color scheme. Um, so this color scheme here is super pretty. It's called San Cai. And according to Wikipedia, San Cai is a type of decoration on Chinese pottery using glazes, predominantly in the three colors of brown, green, and creamy off-white. And so um, this color scheme is something that um, is seen in a lot of um, examples of Tang Dynasty pottery. And so here I'm actually showing you another example that caught my eye. Uh, the, the name of this artifact uh, on the website is called San Cai Zhu Tai, so San Cai, a candle holder. Um, but you see here it actually has a fourth color, which is blue. So here we have blue, yellow, green, and creamy off-white. Um, yeah, and I thought this was a super well-made piece and um, it's very aesthetically pleasing. So I wanted to share it. And um, the last two artifacts I want to show from Tan Dynasty is actually a, a new type of, of, of pottery piece that, that I haven't seen while I was scrolling uh, the you know, preceding dynasties. And these, I don't know if you can guess what they are. These are actually pillows. Uh, yeah, so they're, <laughs> they're pottery, they're ceramic pillows. Um, I've never slept on a ceramic pillow before. I presume they probably have a cooling effect, right? And I mean, they're super pretty to look at. So we'd love to have one. Um, so now here are two pieces from the five dynasties period that I wanted to share. On the left is a bird-shaped cup mug that I found to be quite cute in design. And on the right is um, a piece that uh, I it's a white glaze. I'm not sure how to translate this, um, but it was actually a piece that was used in studies um, and it was to hold water uh, for when you do calligraphy. Okay, so now onto the Song Dynasty. Um, this is another super culturally rich time period that I'm not going to come close to being able to pick representative examples from. So I'm just going to pick some examples that really caught my eye. Okay, so I'm actually going to start off with a piece that's super worth mentioning when we're talking about Song Dynasty pottery, and that is this porcelain wine ewer in a basin kind of design. And um, this particular piece is from Jingdezhen, which is a city that's super known for, for porcelain pottery. Um, but so this wine ewer in a basin kind of design is uh, quite tightly affiliated with the Song Dynasty. And actually... Um, depictions of this design and paintings is actually used to help date those paintings back to the Song Dynasty. Uh, one famous example being Night Revels of Han Xizai or Han Xizai Ye Yan Tu, which I actually talk about in one of my other videos, uh, where we saw uh, depictions of, of this kind of year in a basin, and it actually helped art historians date that painting. So yeah, this is um, quite an interesting design. It's also separable, as you can see. Um, it's like a two-piece set, which is, I, I think it's super neat. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, since I'm super intrigued by this idea of ceramic pillows, here is another ceramic pillow, this time from the Song Dynasty. And this one has a bunny pattern on it, which I find to be super cute, and it's really nicely colored. So the last piece that I want to talk about from the Song Dynasty is this Jizhou Yao Hei You Jian Zhi Tie Hua San Feng Wen Wan. So Jizhou Yao is a kiln in Jizhou, which was in Jiangxi province, um, that was quite known for black glaze. And black glaze was quite popular in the Song Dynasty because tea drinking was an important practice, and tea drinkers preferred black glaze cha jian or tea bowl. Um, even Song Huizong, one of the emperors, um, remarked that uh, black glaze tea bowls were like very elegant and elevated. 
Yeah, so this piece is from Zhizhou Kiln. And uh, what's remarkable about it are the three phoenixes that are on the inside. And the description says that the artisans in the Zhizhou Kiln actually used origami-inspired techniques to get that phoenix pattern onto the inside of the bowl. So yeah, this bowl is quite special. I like it a lot. And yeah, so those were the three pieces that I connected with and wanted to talk about. But there were just so many pieces from the Song Dynasty that were even just on the Palace Museum website. And so here are a few um, pieces that I didn't get to talk about, but still caught my eye. And I thought they were super pretty, um, just in case you wanted to see it. Um, again, I highly encourage you to go check them out on the museum catalogs and read about them. Each piece has a very interesting story that I wish I had the time to tell. Now, the Liao dynasty is a dynasty of the Kitan peoples, who are a nomadic people with equestrian tradition. And in their pottery, we can see a reflection of that equestrian culture. So a lot of their pottery is leather wear inspired. Sometimes at the base or near the handle of the vessel, you would see patterns that resemble stitching or holes through which uh, one would thread some rope. Um, sometimes the shape of the vessel or the shape of the handle themselves would also be leather wear inspired. And so here I am showing you three examples. The Liao dynasty was actually very culturally rich, but for some reason, there's just less artifacts left over compared to other dynasties. Now, skipping ahead to the Yuan Dynasty, the first thing that I noticed is, wow, there's this new, vibrant, bright, beautiful red color that I hadn't seen before. And turns out this is called underglazed red, and it is a technique that was developed in Jingdezhen during the Yuan Dynasty. And what it is, is that first, you apply copper oxide to get the red color, and then you apply glaze over it and heat at 1300 degrees Celsius. And hence, the red is called underglazed red. So I'm going to show you a few examples. In this one, uh, the, the engraving is a rabbit in a grass field, and it's super cute. The underglazed red is applied uh, on the body as well as uh, in the inner part of the vase. And here is an example of a spinnable cup uh, to which the underglazed red is applied. So uh, this cup is interesting because uh, it's, it's the high foot and the cup is connected in such a way that you can spin it uh, without risking the cup falling over. Of course, even though there was this cool new underglazed red technology, it doesn't mean that that was the only thing being made. So here's an example of a plate uh, with blue glaze uh, with a dragon pattern. It's pretty cool. Now, starting the Ming Dynasty, I think the best idea is for you to go to a museum catalog and explore because there are just so many um, pieces. I'm showing you some examples of Ming Dynasty porcelain here so you can get an idea of, of what they might look like. But honestly, you know, for example, in the Palace Museum Beijing website, for each emperor, there's like 11 pages of, of items that you can look at. Um, I think most, if not all, of these pieces from the Ming Dynasty are from Jingdezhen, and it makes sense because at some point Jingdezhen became the royal kiln. Um, so for Qing Dynasty, once again, I think it's best if you just explore by yourself because there's just so many different pieces once again, and you know each emperor had their own preferences. There's a huge variation in style, but there's something that I really want to mention because it's quite interesting, and that is Tianlong Emperor. Tianlong Emperor had a very interesting taste in, in art. It's a little bit too much for my liking, and uh, I'll show you three examples. In this first example, you can already see what I mean by it's a little bit too much for my liking. I feel like there's way too much going on there, but what's really interesting to me about this piece is first, there's a spinning mechanism. And this spinning motif is actually quite common in Tianlong era porcelain. And I think it adds a very interesting engineering aspect to it. For this one, the neck spins. So you can actually see if you stare closely at it, that this, the yellow neck portion is actually, it's a double layer. So that part can actually spin. And um, uh, the idea is that um, there's another motif uh, that's shown in this piece that's quite common in Tianlong era porcelain, and that is the round windows. And so you see here, uh, each there are four such round windows, and within each round window, we see a different landscape painting. Each landscape painting in this case corresponds to a season, and the idea is that you can spin the neck so that you can change the orientation of the vase and see different seasons while still having the two handles always on the two sides. Here again, we see a spinning vase, this time the body spins, right? So if you stare closely, uh, you can see that uh, there is space between the, the bottom part and the body, and uh, the bottom view shows that uh, copper screws hold the whole thing together. And so again, this is a quite an interesting engineering feat. And again, we see this window motif. At this time, this time, the scene that we see through the window is not so much landscape, but uh, we actually see some Western influence in this one. Now, this last one I want to show is also commissioned by Tianlong, and uh, it's 
it's huge. It's 86 centimeters tall, which is, I mean, it doesn't even fit on the screen. It's half of my height. Um, again, I think this is what I mean by uh, his taste in art is a little bit too much for me. Um, they have the nickname Mother of All Porcelain. And basically, I think what it is, is that uh, Qianlong wanted, uh, you know, some of his favorite, um, the most iconic pieces from the past kind of uh, immortalized onto this one porcelain. Um, and you can see like all sorts of different colors from different time periods. Um, I can only imagine how difficult it was for the Dingdezhen artisans to, to do this, right? Because the different glazes require different firing temperatures and there's even different materials. Um, yeah, it's just, <laughs> um, again, I think this is quite the engineering feat, but artistically, <laughs> I'll just say that uh, Chen Lamper has a very, very uh, famously interesting taste uh, when it comes to the arts. Um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope um, some piece in there resonated with you. I highly encourage you to check out uh, various museum sites like Palace Museum Beijing, Palace Museum Taipei. Obviously, the British Museum also <laughs> has um, a lot of these pieces. Yeah, I feel like at least for myself, looking at art is just such a therapeutic exercise and such a chaotic, unpredictable, anxiety-inducing, precarious time. And um, yeah, I hope that uh, you like this video. I might do a deep dive into one of the dynasties I am particularly interested in, for example, the Song and Liao dynasty. Um, I might also do a deep dive in uh, the technology behind some of these glazes. I'm interested in, in learning about the techniques. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. What? <laughs>